Hello, lovely internet strangers. I know it's been a while. I apologize. My focus has been pulled in a bunch of different directions recently. I'm still working on the reading project. However, those books are generally dense. They require a lot of time on my part to read and take notes. And given the aforementioned disparate focus I've had, it's been hard to focus on that project. So in the meantime, I wanted to share a couple of videos that would be easier for me to make, but would still be interesting. I actually don't really follow publishing news anymore when it comes to these controversies. When I hear about them, it's because something has penetrated my bubble on Twitter, essentially. I still have two Twitter accounts. I have the one that was associated with my real life identity, and then I have my A Square Twitter, and I don't use the other one anymore, but I can switch back and forth if I want to essentially look at two different versions of the world, or if I want to know what, you know, publishing Twitter or leftist Twitter, feminist Twitter thinks about things. I can just sort of jump back into that bubble. So it's very interesting. But I haven't been doing that in a while because it makes me hate myself and the world. I actually heard about this because Shuan had tweeted about it. When I clicked through because she shared a series of images of these tweets regarding this controversy surrounding a young adult author, I didn't realize that it was going to be a young adult author that I personally have enjoyed her work for years and years, so I kind of took it a little bit personally. Essentially in this video, I would like to lay out the basics of the controversy and then give my thoughts and my perspective from someone who worked in the publishing industry for several years and was an avid, devoted reader of young adult fiction and of this particular author, and not only why this kind of behavior is frankly unacceptable from authors, but why I think it is so common, particularly from female authors. So the basics are this. On Tuesday, November 12th, 2019, Sarah Dessen, who is a hugely popular and influential New York Times bestselling young adult author with a long established career, tweeted in response to an article where her book was sort of criticized. Northern State University in Aberdeen, South Dakota has a program called Common Read, which is the kind of program that exists at a lot of colleges around the country where a book is selected that all first year students are supposed to read. There was a short news piece in the Aberdeen News about the program, a 2017 graduate was interviewed about why she decided to volunteer for the selection committee this year. Her exact quote was, she's fine for teen girls, but definitely not up to the level of common read. So I became involved simply so I could stop them from ever choosing Sarah Dessen. It wasn't exactly a nice thing to say, but so what? It wasn't in the New York Times, it was like in Aberdeen News. Authors get criticized all the time. They get criticized on Goodreads, they get criticized on Twitter, they get really bad reviews in established review outlets like Kirkus or Publishers Weekly. Now here's what Sarah Dessen said when she tweeted. Authors are real people. We put our heart and soul into the stories we write often because it is literally how we survive in this world. I'm having a really hard time right now and this is just mean and cruel. I hope it made you feel good. Honestly, this is not surprising to me. I'm just sad that it is Sarah Dessen, who is an author that I have loved her work for many years and respected her. And unfortunately, she proves to be just like most other authors. Often when I worked in publishing, I would complain about authors being essentially what I would call adult babies. I don't mean this about all authors, but there seems to be a correlation between people who become authors and people who have emotional issues, whether it's deep mental health problems or they just lack basic coping skills for what I feel are probably normal emotions. And they will use their author status as this shield, you know, writing the stories is literally how we survive in the world, you know, so you hurt me. So I get to publicly drag you. Knowing full well that she is a major author whose tweets get major attention from the community, she did this. She did this to someone who graduated from college in 2017, a nobody college graduate who took action about something that she cared about, preventing this type of book from being selected for the common reading program, an opinion that Sarah Dessen disagreed with because it's her book and also she writes young adult in general. Now to be fair, she has since apologized, so she did get some backlash for this. I'm not sure how much pushback she got from the actual community on Twitter. I found a couple of articles criticizing her, like this article in The Guardian that was titled, Hey young adult authors, writing for teenagers is no excuse to act like them. But initially, 
eventually she got support from Jody Pico, who is a huge author, not a young adult author, New York Times bestseller, hugely influential. She wrote, this suggests stories about young women matter less. They are not as worthy or literary as those about anything but young women, but their concerns and hopes and fears are secondary or frivolous. This kind of thinking is what leads to gender discrimination in publishing. Wow. The level of intellect on display is magnificent. It's why there are more shows on Broadway with male leads than female ones. It's like, I feel like you started over here and suddenly you teleported to over here. Please explain the route you took to get from point A to point B so quickly. It's why there aren't many female directors, even though the majority of book buyers and ticket buyers are women. No, there couldn't be a possible other explanation. It couldn't be that less women are interested in directing Broadway plays, or that directing Broadway plays is really hard, so very few people do it, including men. And then this last tweet is amazing. To not speak up about this incident isn't just demeaning to Sarah. It's demeaning to women, period. Want to fight the patriarchy? No, I don't, but thanks for asking. Start by reminding everyone that stories about women are worthy, that they matter, that they are necessary. And then this chick Jennifer Weiner who's another author, not young adult, said, and I will piggyback in what Jody said with a reminder. When we tell teenage girls that their stories matter less or not at all, there are real world consequences. And then there's a hashtag me too. But this is important to share because the context behind this kind of controversy is that for years in the young adult community, the female authors have been pushing this claim that they are discriminated against in publishing, that there are more female authors than male authors, but the male authors get, you know, better reviews, more attention, bigger film deals, etc, etc. I haven't looked at the numbers recently, so maybe that's something that I could do in another video. But women are in total control of the young adult space. Now, she said when we tell teenage girls that their stories matter less or not at all, but this chick is not telling teenage girls that their stories matter less or not at all. The only reason that anyone even knows about this is because Sarah Dessen tweeted about it. If she had just ignored it, read it, went to her therapist and cried about it, no one would know about it. It was in the Aberdeen News. So this graduate, when she was interviewed for that piece, was not trying to speak to teenage girls or tell them that their stories matter less. All this chick was saying was that she didn't think that a book that is targeted at teen girls was appropriate for the common read. And what is the common read? Each year, Honors Champions a Campus and Community Common Read Experience. This initiative is designed to bring together people from all areas of campus and the Brookings community to learn, discuss, and engage a singular impactful book and associated themes. It was originally designed to raise the level of academic challenge at SDSU, enhance our awareness of diverse perspectives, increase faculty and student interaction, encourage, serve, and promote enriching, engaging educational experiences both in and outside class. The Common Read Committee is a group of students, faculty, staff, and community members who plan and implement the Common Read experience each year. The group selects the book, provides training for faculty and staff who will be teaching the book, and plans numerous events designed to encourage participation and employ critical thinking around the text. They picked Irresistible, The Rise of Addictive Technology and the Business of Keeping Us Hooked, which tracks the rise of behavioral addiction and explains why so many of today's products are irresistible. This year, the committee is focusing on the ABCs of the conscientious use of technology with themes of access, behavior, connection, and safety. So as someone who, as I have stated, is a huge fan of Sarah Dessen's work and her book, The Truth About Forever, is one of my favorite books of all time, I can tell you right away that a Sarah Dessen book does not strike me as an appropriate choice for this kind of common read program. It's not going to raise the level of academic challenge because the reading level is incredibly low. The topics discussed in her books are also not ones that are going to raise the level of academic challenge. Do they help teenage girls or other people who are going through some experiences, process those experiences, and deal with those experiences? Yes. Are they entertaining? Yes. Are they valuable books to exist in the world? Yes, in my opinion. But are any of her books an appropriate choice for a common read program that is designed not only for first-year college students, but the entire community surrounding the campus? No. It's not like this was some case of her being a librarian who was trying to prevent people from having access to a Sarah Dessen book. It wasn't like this chick 
wrote like a blog post or went on Twitter to drag her. She was asked why she participated in the committee to select this book. And she didn't want it to be a book that was for teen girls. She said it's fine for teen girls. Now, clearly they read that as a dig. What's suitable for teen girls isn't suitable for everyone else and therefore it's lesser. But just because it's targeted at teen girls or only suitable for teen girls doesn't mean that it's lesser. Even if she was implying that, so what? Her voice has no weight. She has no impact in this world with those words. Now, teen girls are looking to Sarah Dessen because she is one of their favorite authors. And I don't know how I would have felt if I was a teenager and I had Twitter and I saw Sarah Dessen tweet like that. She had a chance to say something really reasoned or to just ignore the whole situation and let it wash over her like water over a duck. But did she choose that route? No. It's really disappointing to see people that you used to respect act like this. Like I said, I already know that authors can be adult babies. And it's like, ugh, but did you have to be one? Really? And it's not just women that do this. I can tell you stories for days about male authors not acting their age. But the woman is almost 50 years old. And I feel that we should expect more from anyone who is that age, not just someone who's an author, but people in her camp, the young adult, feminist, female, author, mafia, community, whatever you want to call it, are always talking about the responsibility of the books we write, the responsibility of the words that you publish, and yeah, Yet they feel no responsibility for how they speak to real life people, real life young adults. Can we just talk about the fact that all she did was say, your book is not suitable, in my opinion, for this one program that we have at the university that I graduated from. She didn't say, nobody should ever read this book. This book is literal trash. She didn't say any of that. That was all deduced from the words. And that sort of brings in another point, which is that hashtag because women, because women read into all kinds of things. And I definitely do this. I'm not saying that I'm immune from this. It's really interesting that all this stuff is getting covered in sort of mainstream outlets now, like Slate wrote about this and The Guardian and Vulture and Newsweek wrote about it. Honestly, this stuff has been happening for a long time and it's only recently that this kind of stuff is getting written up in the mainstream media. And it's just funny to see something like this where, you know, Shoe on Head is tweeting about it because that whole world is like this world that I left behind, you know, can't remember the last time I actually read a young adult novel. And I remember when I was so immersed in that world, when I loved the books and I loved the community. But even before I left feminism, I had started to see the really toxic patterns as the social justice warriors in particular started to become a very vocal minority to dominate the conversation. Seeing this kind of stuff just reaffirms for me why I don't associate myself with that community anymore, why it's hard for me to read those books now, because as much as I try to separate art from the artist, the authors are so toxic, the community is so toxic. Speaking specifically about young adult authors, so many of them are so hypocritical. They clearly have you know, no impulse control control to not tweet out things like that. I still think there's a lot of value in young adult literature and people are allowed to disagree, but then you get like the Guardian writing about it and pointing her out for her behavior and the right to do so. And it just gives people on the outside looking in this like impression of young adult literature as being tainted by the behavior of its authors, which is unfortunate. But you know, they bring it on themselves. And this is just like one controversy that's blowing up. But these authors in the young adult area, act like this on Twitter all the time. What she wrote about, well, I've been going through some stuff right now and you you really hurt me. So like, I hope you feel good. Oh, you don't understand what I'm going through. It's so hard being an author, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, yeah, we all have it hard. Plenty of us have anxiety disorders and we're not famous authors. At least you can pay for a therapist. But it's amazing how some of us manage to get through the day without like trying 
trying to use our emotional problems as a reason to bludgeon someone much younger with no power in the world. (laughs) And this ties into this idea that I've been sort of mulling over recently, especially after I read Women in Economics by Charlotte Perkins Gilman and my previous forays into reading some chapters of The Manipulated Man by Esther Villar. Perhaps it has always been this way, but it seems to me that in current year, women are being increasingly infantilized because they have achieved not only more and more rights, but just more and more benefits and voice and power without any accompanying consequences or responsibility. So yes, Sarah Dessen apologized, but only because she got backlash. She didn't apologize because she woke up the next day and realized, wow, that was a really mean thing to say. I was tweeting from a mean place and I shouldn't have said that. And I should look at the fact that I have power in this situation and me and my fellow feminists are always bitching about how people use power over others and people need to check their privilege and their power. And yet here I am, using my power to drag this chick on Twitter and she had to go delete all our social media accounts because of the fucking shitstorm she was getting unleashed on her for this one insignificant comment. And why did she feel comfortable tweeting this out? Because in the back of her mind, she probably knew that she wouldn't face any consequences for it. And I don't mean that in that she was trying to be malicious and take this chick down. She just had an emotional reaction. She wanted to lash out and she knew that people would probably be on her side, at least within the community, and she got support from other authors. So it's an idea I've been thinking about a lot. And again, it's not like men can't be this way also, but I think in particular that women are being infantilized because they now expect, because of feminism, for everyone to agree with them. And they feel entitled to say, well, you're a man, so you don't get to have an opinion. And just expect that that's how things are going to go. Women expect that they can hit a man and the man's not going to hit them back. Women expect that they'll ask a man out and he'll say yes because they're a woman. Not all women, but this is a case for many. Feminism comes in to give women a reason for all the things that are wrong in their lives. Why they can't find a good man. Why they keep getting dumped. Why they keep picking the wrong man. Why they didn't get the promotion. Why they don't earn as much money as they want to. And on and on and on. It's not because of things they can improve about themselves. It's not because of circumstances outside of their control, like their boss just picked someone else. No, it's because men are oppressing them. It's because they're a victim. It's because they have it so hard and they don't have to change anything about themselves. They can just rail at men. In this instance, she was not attacking a man, but it's indicative of the kind of complacency that I think women fall into, that they're just like, well, I can just, you know, lash out at this person because of my emotions, and that's fine. This is acceptable behavior, and I'm not going to get any consequences from it. And like I said, yeah, she got a couple articles, and she kind of apologized. And she only apologized because she got some backlash. This is going to be a fucking blip. Can you imagine if a male author, even a male young adult author, had done the same thing to a recent female college graduate? The outrage would be insane. And the outrage over this did not escalate to that level. Like he would be canceled. That man would be nuked out of existence, blacklisted. See ya, sayonara, goodbye. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I hope to have more content for you very soon.